Carl Jung's theory of the anima and the animus is sophisticated and soul form, but you don't need to read any of these books to start integrating the archetypal masculine and feminine energies which reside deep inside your unconscious mind. Let me put these books down because this video is going to be my best possible attempt to condense psychological theory and complexity into hopefully an immensely practical contribution to healing our immature, ignorant and often destructive relationships between men and women. Ultimately, I want to see the shift from superiority and inferiority, conflict dynamics and shadow war to something more like a conscious partnership and collaborative companionship model of relating between men and women. Because why do we need to integrate our anima or our animus? Well, integration means liberation from compulsion. That's the crucial idea which I want to express in this video and we're going to be doing it by two specific shadow work exercises which I find immeasurably valuable for private clients when they're trying to go through these challenges in real time, not just the theory, but real time integration. I'm sure you've seen across the internet this very strange, almost schizophrenic splitting between idealization and demonization of men and women. It's this very immature and juvenile focusing on the absolute best and the absolute worst traits of masculinity and femininity, and then flip-flopping between the two, publicly stating one thing and privately doing another thing, and these very tragic dynamics where, let's say for example, a woman. A woman is brutalized and tyrannized and traumatized by a series of unhelpful, destructive relationships, and she consciously says to me, Jordan, I want to move from this pattern and have a conscious, liberated, healthy man. And yet she keeps choosing the guy who's overtly controlling and outright destructive. Or the same with the conscious man who states his love of femininity as delightful, emotionally fluid, and that tender, caretaking love that he truly seeks. And yet... He dates a series of women who are emotional tornadoes and vampiric succubus style characters who clearly take away from so much of what he could bring into the world because he keeps making the same shadow mistake. Crucially, this is a challenge of anima or animus integration and the reason I'm making this video today is in response to this question. Fantastic question, lots of space for me to explore with this. We're going to focus on the masculine and feminine maturity and immaturity. If you want to get involved in the series, then leave your question below. The anima and the animus, theoretically speaking, is the internal image we have of the ideal masculine or the ideal feminine. It's something which has symbolic psychological truth, not necessarily concrete truth, in the outer material reality. And that's about, about as complex as we need to make it for the sake of this video. You're already likely in contact with something like an understanding of what you see as the ideal masculine or the ideal feminine. But the first exercise that we're going to go into into this video will make that explicit. And this is really exciting because it's not just about romance, it's also about friendship and about dynamics within the family. And of course, it's about partnership and sexuality, but really it's about our understanding of the two complementary halves of humanity. The first exercise that I invite you to join me in is called the ideal romantic partner exercise. And this will give us a good indication to the projected libidinal energy that we're putting onto the man or woman of our dreams. It's something which I find very useful in one-to-one -one space with both men and women. Typically, we'll get a list from a woman that start with, the woman will write down, mission-driven, strong, decisive, speaks the truth, family man, father, and then it gets maybe more superficial, you know, they're rich, they've got the certain type of body, they've got the certain type of status, but also they have that awareness, and awareness being that core trait that they tend to idealize, that masculine way of seeing. They've got perception, and their perception is biting almost, but it's so attractive because they can see clearly. That's something like the typical animus projection. 
And then for the man, if I do this exercise with the men that I've worked with, they'll tend to bring up things like the softness, the caretaking, the nurturing, the delightfulness, the sexiness, the fluidity, the flow, all of those wonderful elements of femininity which are so attractive for us as men. And they'll also mention things like motherhood. Crucially, motherhood is something which tends to come to the forefront, I think, and usually in the 30s for men, they're like, wow, I can't make a baby. They can make a baby. It seems so obvious, but there's that mystery. There's that feminine mystery which is projected onto women. Where does this leave us? When we have the ideal masculine or the ideal feminine which are operating as internal objects, object being a crucial word here, the internalized object, if we look back to objects relations theory, is naturally a two-dimensional image. It's a thing, not a person, because no person and no image could ever be completely overlaid or even met as reality in anyone that you could possibly meet. Sure, you might be dating someone, let's say you're a woman dating a man, and he has some of those qualities of mission-driven, truthful, clear-minded perception, and he's got the athleticism and the finances to back himself up. But he won't be everything that you're after in terms of that ideal animus projection, and the same with men when they're looking towards the women in the world. But this isn't where we should stop when it comes to practically integrating these energies, because what's happening when we're projecting outwards, we're disowning that possibility of actually becoming that which we see as something separate from ourselves. How many men are in the world right now who are unable to dance, they're unable to cry, they're unable to be nurturing and caretaking, and ultimately they have far too rigid a way of being in the world? How many women are beautifully emotional and intuitive, and they've got a very fluid and very seasonal way of flowing through their daily life, but they've yet to develop their rational capacities in a way that they could. They've yet to develop a systematic, structured way of disciplining themselves when it's appropriate. This indicates something like a yet-to-be-fulfilled withdrawal of the anima or animus projection. So when I guide clients through this list, and initially they think it's well, this is my key romantic partner, and here we are. Now I know what to look out for. I'm going to put my intention behind this and go back onto the dating apps and try and find this 11 out of 10 individual. I always reflect back to them. Well, look at that list and look again and look for a third time. Those are all the traits that you want to develop in yourself. The woman who talks about the mission-driven mindset and the truthfulness of the man's word that they want to keep them safe and see the world clearly, she doesn't need a man to do all of that for her, and neither does a man who's looking for the emotionally fluid, sensitive, nurturing, and expressive, playful woman. He can start to become more of that himself. Of course, it doesn't mean that he's going to become a woman, it doesn't mean that the woman's going to become a man, and it doesn't mean that the man needs to become effeminate, or that the woman needs to become hyper-masculinized. This is another problem that we'll go into. But he can reclaim something like the feminine energy that he's thrown out into the world and bring it back to his heart and his center and learn how to be that which he's chasing so that he doesn't get caught up in the projections or at the very worst, the pornographic fantasies which trap him in lower levels of consciousness. And the same for the woman. When we get into the shadow territory, this gets even more interesting. I'm going to go into that in just a moment. What I was just mentioning there in regards to integrating the opposite or actually withdrawing the energy which has been pushed all the way outwards, it's not just about romantic partners, it's about friendships, and it's about our understanding of men and women at a core, subconscious level. Again, it's an object, it's an image or an object, it's something which is two-dimensional but also has so much depth and so much value that we're hungry to come in contact with this. And many men and many women will ultimately loop themselves around, especially in the romantic sphere, always trying to find Mr. Right or the perfect woman. It probably won't happen. If you want to develop your consciousness and mature your consciousness as a man or a woman, one of the most powerful ways to go about doing that at an appropriate period of time, which we'll come into, is to try and integrate more of the undeveloped masculine or feminine inside of yourself. Of course, for men, this doesn't mean that you abandon the masculine work that you're meant to be doing. It doesn't mean that you abandon your discipline. 
your devotion to a mission, your desire to serve, your honoring of your body, your athleticism, your sharpness, your courage, and that feeling of doing what needs to be done. But you can also be a bit more feminine with yourself, where it's appropriate. We don't need to go into the absolute black and white idealization and demonization of the traits which we simultaneously want and yet are afraid of bringing into ourselves. It's the classic Madonna whore paradox of the beautiful woman and the ultimate whore. It's such an immature way of seeing the world because you've only got vision on those two very narrow, defined ends of the spectrum of colour in between. One of the common traps, and before we go into the shadow work exercise, which is particularly insightful, one of the traps that women fall into is sometimes they will try to integrate their masculine by becoming hyper-masculinized women who become kind of that like boss bitch, ball crusher personality. This is the woman who goes into the gym and wants to outcompete all the men. She tries to take over the office as an imitation man. And ultimately, if she continues this for enough years, she will lose her period. She will get sick. She will get sad. And she will find that she is hollow and barren because she wasn't fulfilling something which was her natural birthright. Namely, her radiant divine feminine core. In the same way that a man can't pretend to be a woman and get away without some kind of mental health side effect, women can't do it either. It's a wonderful, natural step from an old, tyrannical way or an outdated, unnecessarily traditional way of a woman should be the housewife and the subservient figure in a patriarchal society. I get it, I get the feminist critique. But to mistake the practical integration as being something like let's be a knockoff man in the world and the workplace and ignore the fact that I am a seasonal being with a menstrual cycle, with the power and the beauty and the gift to create life into the world, which is what we all need, as well as the many nurturing and caretaking traits which come naturally to most women, not all women, but the vast majority of women, they will choose these kinds of roles when given free choice. We see it in countries like Sweden, one of the most egalitarian societies out there. When you give free choice, there becomes an even marked gender distinction between stereotypically men going for building and women going for nurturing. It's obvious. And yet, we fall into the traps of taking it too literally. We don't need to become effeminate as men, and we don't need to become hyper-masculinized as women. What we actually need to do is realize that there are ideal shadow traits, the golden shadow traits, and dark shadow traits which we can come into contact with, and crucially, come into relationship with. So this takes us to our second exercise. Summing up the first exercise though, if you want to take a pen and a paper and just pause this video and write down all of your ideal masculine or all of your ideal feminine traits and values, you'll have a pretty good indication to your ideal romantic partner and also the work that you can do for yourself in the right proportion to feel like more of a complete, fully integrated, full spectrum human being. Wonderful. Let's go into the second exercise. The second exercise is a lot more confronting. This is something that really does strike people as being quite a wake-up call when they're looking at their certain toxic relationship patterns or maybe things like addiction to pornography or addiction to certain types of vampiric relationships to men or women, which they know, and I mean you know it's holding you back. The question that I want to ask you which destructive, ugly, toxic traits are you attracted to? Like really, honestly, which ones are you attracted to? Let's take the female example. This is something that comes up with female clients surprisingly often, but also it's not surprising when it comes up almost everyone that I work with, there's something like this pattern underneath the feminine psyche. Which toxic traits are women attracted to in their unconscious at a yet to be integrated level? Sometimes it's the things that they consciously express as being the most ugly and disgusting things that they'd never want to be a part of. For example, the cold, mechanistic man who is so robotic and so unfeeling and, of course, ruthless and tyrannical from that place. It's simultaneously disgusting and completely repulsive and not what they want at all because they don't feel safe. And yet, 
It also has a strange dark attraction, which a lot of women can get wrapped up in, maybe not in the external sense, but you'll see it in the romantic erotic fantasy sense, with the teetering towards things like bondage or restraint play. I'm oversimplifying, but there's a level of dark masculine attraction which comes with that cold, ruthless, objectifying kind of mentality, which is somehow exciting. Doesn't mean it's wrong, but of course it's about proportionality. You want a man who can have access to that within a consensual relationship where it's an appropriate moment, not a man who's in that persona and that fake ego mask 24-7. Let's flip it around to the man with the woman example. So which traits are men particularly attracted to when it comes to the shadow feminine? And I mean the dark shadow feminine, not the golden shadow ideal. I'll speak for myself. It's the emotionally turbulent hurricane woman. It is the woman who is so unpredictably explosive, so moody, just like that, so chaotic that you think, wow, she's got almost a shimmer. It's like the chaos swirls around her and that becomes captivating and mysterious. And the reality is you will waste many years of your life and many hours of your days if you choose to chase that kind of woman. And this is also the pornographic fantasy that men fall into where they somehow believe that they're the one in control. Pornography at its very baseline is the desirable object, the woman for a straight man, the desirable object, the woman which can do nothing but please you and satisfy your needs. But of course, you think that you're, what, you're the one in power. You think you're the one who's taking control. And the reality is that every day or twice per day or however many times per day, you are taken off your path. You are seduced, which from the Latin seducere means to be led astray. And you're led astray onto something which you think makes you feel powerful. And the reality is that your energy is leaking out into something which isn't real. And that's the same with the emotional storm which comes up from the yet to be matured feminine which hasn't realized that there's an appropriate way to be emotional and an inappropriate way which causes destruction to the world around her. There's challenges at both ends, but the core idea of this second exercise I invite you to complete for yourself is to be brutally honest. And I mean brutally honest. There might be people in the comment section right now who've watched maybe a few minutes into this video and already started to leave a comment about how I didn't cover this area or oversimplified on that area. I know. It's a really complex topic, but the real shadow work and the real integration work comes with honesty, which I can't speak in a public sense when I'm trying to generalize to make it accessible to enough people. For many women that I work with, they will be simultaneously repulsed and attracted by the cold, calculating, brilliant, very powerful, but sometimes tyrannical man. It creates a feeling of fear and also safety somehow. It's a more archaic imprint, and tragically, this can often rep uh, represent some difficult father dynamics in childhood where sadly we didn't have the most grounded loving fathers, and that was what they were used to. And the same with men who are attracted to the chaotic woman, which may represent the mother figure that was a bit too hysterical and not emotionally available when you needed them to be when you were a young boy. I'm oversimplifying. I'm on the side of both men and women. I have literally devoted my life, as far as I can see, and I think I will see this all the way through for many decades. I can't imagine doing anything else. This is my real service. To seeing the maturation of men and women across the board, and this requires us looking beneath the surface of what we are attracted to. Because if we don't make that unconscious territory truly illuminated, we will fall into the same patterns over and over Again, my number one invitation is to do these exercises, but leaving this and wrapping this all up as a nice way of protecting yourself from the narratives that are out there. Beware people who talk in absolutes. All women, all, wet, all men, no men, no women. Everyone, everything, nothing, no one. It's the greatest indication to an immature level of consciousness which hasn't integrated that which they're either judging about or attacking inside of themselves. The reason I can relate to women in one-to-one -one space is that I know what it feels like to some degree to be a woman because of how empathically I can step into that space and through 
the reading that I've done, and through listening and genuinely trying to connect. I will never get all the way into the experience, the embodied experience of femininity in the same way that a woman can't do that with a man. But the feedback that I get on these videos, often from women who feel seen and understood, is that it is possible for a man to understand a woman and therefore truly connect and honor and feel in partnership with a woman. And a woman can do the same in regards to the men in their life. We all rise up together, but to rise up together means understanding each other and also understanding the difference and the distinction between the flat two-dimensional images that we overlay onto each other and changing it to something which is more three-dimensional. But to become three-dimensional, you have to see that dimensionality within yourself. To integrate your anima or to integrate your animus requires the introspective turn to seeing where those values and those traits and those forms of stereotypical expression could be brought forwards within you in an appropriate way, an appropriate context, an appropriate timeline, and also genuinely attempting to love and honor that in the men or women that you meet and see ourselves as complements, two halves that come together to create a better world. That's what I'm aiming towards. That's what I think we should all aim towards. And if you're looking to make it practical, well, let's uh, go around to the next video. We're looking at structural dissociation and how to heal our schizophrenic splits with parts work. Got you right there. This is the hard work. Join me over there. It's well worth it.